day, grade nines. Welcome to Tuma Mina teaching. You are tuned in for your first lesson in term one for economic and management sciences. As you know, EMS consists out of three sections. In the first series, we had a look at the financial literacy section of EMS. In this series, we will have a look at the economic and entrepreneurship section. My name is Shante Manuel, and this is my contribution to Tuma Mina teaching. As you can see, we have a lot of fun things to work through. But before we start, I would like to encourage you to go and review all our lessons for this series. That way you will be certain that you understand everything we've had a look at. Furthermore, we would like to encourage you to subscribe to our channel. That way you will receive notifications of all of the new videos that will be uploaded. This will ensure that you up your EMS game. Are you ready? Let's get down to business. Let's get down, let's get down to business. Every country in this entire world is subjected to an economic system. Well then what is an economic system? An economic system is a system that a country chooses and uses to allocate resources for production or distribute goods and resources for the consumption by citizens. Well, what does this mean? This means that the government or citizens decide which resources to use for the production and consumption of products and services. They also determine the method of distribution so that all citizens can receive the products and services produced. Effectively, we would like the government and the citizens to determine the economic system of every country. But that is not always the case because of the economic problem. So what is the economic problem you may ask? The economic problem poses a challenge on how to meet the endless needs and wants of people in our country, but with limited resources to offer. A recent example that you might remember is the toilet paper shortage that took place during the looting in KwaZulu-Natal. So many consumers wanted toilet paper, but there was not enough for everybody. Yikes! This is just a basic example of the economic problem. However, there are more serious cases where economic systems of all the countries cannot meet the needs of consumers. It is therefore important that every country determines which economic system best suits their needs and allows them to distribute all products and services to citizens in the country. Let's take a look at our first economic system. This system is called the planned economy. A planned economy is an economic system in which the government makes all the decisions about the production and consumption of goods and services in the country. The government bases their ideas of what they think is good for the citizens of the country. Let's visit Kamva Makeba of Ikasi Kofu Company. If you can remember, in our financial literacy series, we were introduced to Kamva and IKC. But if you have not watched our financial literacy videos, let me introduce you to Kamva. Kamva is the founder of the coffee company Ikasi Kofu Company, which was established in January 2019. Kamva started out as a barista at a local coffee shop in his neighborhood. He realized that he has a passion for coffee and business. 
we will journey with Canva in this EMS series. Let's say Canva started his coffee business in a country with a planned economy. Canva would be dependent on the government to provide all the coffee beans he needs in order to produce his coffee. If the government produces many coffee beans, Canva would be able to make and sell many coffees to his customers, ensuring happy smiles on their faces. But if the government limited the amount of coffee beans available to Canva, or did not want him to start a coffee business at all, he would either have to produce the amount of coffees with the available beans or find a different business venture. There are many countries which make use of the planned economic system. Examples of these countries are North Korea, China, Cuba and Russia. The Chinese government has decided that no one in the country may use WhatsApp. Imagine that! How would they speak to their friends? What is the reason for this thing? They tried to regulate the amount of information sent to the citizens of the country. Let's have a look at the characteristics of a planned economic system. But before we start, I would like to introduce you to a study tip that you can use while preparing for your exams. It's always important to draw out important keywords so that your brain can remember and recall all the information that you've studied. Today, we will take out three keywords to memorize the characteristics of the planned economy. The first characteristic states that the government owns all the land natural resources, factories and farms. Secondly, citizens are not allowed to own any property. Thirdly, there is no competition between businesses offering goods and services at different prices. Let's draw out our keywords. The first keyword we'll draw out is the word government reminding us that the government owns all the resources in the country. Our second keyword that we will draw out is the word citizens, to remind us that citizens are not allowed to own property in a planned economy. Our final keyword that we will use is the word competition, reminding us that there is no competition in a planned economy. So let's recall our three keywords of a planned economy. The first one is government. Secondly, citizens. And finally, competition. Well done. Let's move on to the advantages of a planned economy. Firstly, planned economies are very stable systems because they are considered closed economies with very little interference. The keyword associated with this advantage is the word closed. The second advantage is that the government can direct economic resources to areas where they are most needed. The keyword in this advantage is the word direct. And finally, this economic system ensures that the welfare of citizens are taken care of. Can you guess what this keyword is? Of course, it is welfare. Well done, grade nines. So in short, grade nines, the three keywords for the advantages of a planned economy is the word closed, direct, and welfare. Planned economies have many advantages, but we also need to consider the disadvantages. The first disadvantage is that it can limit economic growth because there is no entrepreneurship or competition. The keyword here is limit. 
Secondly, there is no freedom of choice for consumers as the government supplies all the products and services. The key word here is freedom. Thirdly, there is no incentive for people to do their jobs well, which makes it very difficult to motivate workers to excel. The key word here is the word motivate. Okay, now it's your turn. Can you remember the three keywords? Quick question. Do you think South Africa forms part of a planned economy? Think about it. But remember, we still have two economies that we need to work through. At the end of the third one, I'm going to ask you again, and I expect you to know this one. Please note the following. In this series, we will only have a look at three characteristics, advantages and disadvantages of each economy. We know that in class, you learn more than three facts. So please make sure you study all the work your teacher tells you to. Are you ready to practice what you have learned? The following activity states, complete the sentences by filling in the missing words from the box. We will put on a 10 second timer so that you can complete this activity. Or pause this video so that you can complete it effectively. Was that an easy activity? Let's see if you got all the answers correct. Well done, grade lines. You have just completed your first lesson for term one. Remember to complete the self-marking assessment so that you are certain you understand everything we have learned today. In the next lesson, we will have a look at our second economic system, which is the market economy. See you next time. Bye.